Right, this is a lecture on the Chinese remainder theorem. It's to do with uh, introduction to number theory, if you're wondering what course it is. Right, definitions. Right, first off, we've got here, these are all primes, so P0, P1, P2, and so on. They're all primes, and they're called pairwise coprime if each of them together are all primes. So there's no common factor between any of them. Yeah? So the first one and the second one, the highest common factor is 1. The first one and the third one, highest common factor is 1, and so on. Right, now we've got some rules, which are for the Chinese remainder theorem. And the f Well, first we're going to assume that x equal is congruent to y mod n. Now you should know what this means. Um, and what we're saying here is that if you multiply it by anything, such as z, on, if you multiply it on both sides, so x times z and y times z, then it's exactly the same. So more, we have uh, x1 is congruent to y1 mod n, and x2 is congruent to y2 mod n. If, the, if we have those two, so we have two different things for the mod n, then we can say that x1 plus x2 is congruent to y1 plus y2 mod n, and x1 minus x2 is congruent to y1 minus y2 mod n. And we can only get a solution with the Chinese remainder theorem if we have x is a mod m, x is b mod n, if these two here, uh, the highest common factor is 1. Okay, so if they're pairwise coprime. Right, method. For, we'll have a, an equation x is congruent to a mod b, we find a solution for which x works, so it might be 7, and then we add bt. Now t is just a, multi a multiplier, so it can be any letter you like uh, to find the general solution. And we've got some examples. Right, uh, none of this is animated, so uh, here we've got a nice simple example here. If we just ignore this, we have x is congruent to 3 mod n. Now we find a solution for which it works. And this would be, well, 3, because if we have x is 3, then it, it's congruent to 3 mod 6. And so we, now we have to add 6 plus a multiplier. So we have x is 6, y plus 3. Yeah? Uh, for this one, again, we have, well, the answer is 4 again, because if x is 4, then it'll work, plus the 7 times a multiplier, so 7y plus 4, yeah? Here, this one's a bit harder, we have two equations. We have x is congruent to 9 mod 12, and x is congruent to 4 mod 7. Now, we do it exactly the same to start off with. First, we'll solve this one, in which case it's x is 12y plus 9. As you can see, uh, 9 is our solution, and 12, is that, we multiply that by the multiplier around it. And then for this, because we've got an x here, we can put that into this equation, because these are given together. So we get 12y plus 9 is congruent to 4 mod 7. Now we can get this 7, and we can subtract it from these. So we get 5y plus 2, because we've taken 7 off each. You can take a 7 off that, and then 7 again, and 7 again, and only one 7 off that if you fancy, or no 7s at all. And it'll be exactly the same. Uh, and this is congruent to 4 mod 7. Now what we've done here is we've moved this 2, because it's adding there, we can move it over the other side and it'll subtract from that 4, so we get 5y congruent to 2 mod 7. And now we have to find a general solution to this. Now if you go through thinking of it, where you try y is 1, 2, so on, you can only, you'll only have trials up to uh, 6, because it's mod 7. And it turns out the solution is 6, because if we do 6 times 5, that's 30, which if we divide by 7, it's, uh, 28 is the one below that. Add 2, then we get, well, it works out perfectly. Yeah? Because 28 plus 2 is 30, and that's 30 that side. Uh, so this is our general solution, y is 6 plus 7z. And then what we do with this y, because we've got the y this time, haven't we? And z is our new multiplier, we can't use the same one. We put this y back into our equation here and multiply it out and this will give us the general solution 
which is 81 plus 84z, and this is the general solution for both of these. And you can try that by using different uh, values for z. Right now, this is a big example. We have four different equations. X is 0 mod 2, X is 0 mod 3, X is 1 mod 5, X is 6 mod 7. Uh, for the first one, it's quite simple, we have 0 plus 2Y. Uh, because our first, if we have Z, X is 0, that works fine. And because it's 0, we don't have to write it down. So we've got 2Y. Now we use this X value in our next one. So 2Y is 0 mod 3. So again, we can choose 0, and then we have to have the multiplier, 3 times the multiplier, which is z, so y is 3z. This is all very easy so far, so then we move that y into this equation here, and we get x is 6z. Now we put the 6z into this equation, 6z is congruent to 1 mod 5. Following here, now we need to find a, a solution. Well, looking at it, 6 is 1 mod 5, so we can have z is 1, because 6 is uh, 1 mod 5. Uh, so we can have our 1 plus our multiplier times 5, which is 5t in this case. Uh, people you generally use y, z, t, u. And it doesn't generally get much bigger than that, but you could use any letter or Latin symbol, Greek symbol. Um, this is our value for z. We can put that into this equation here, multiply it out. We get 30t plus 6. Um, we put this into the, our final equation, 30t plus 6 is congruent to 6 mod 7. We can move the 6 over. So that will move over there and it would subtract. So we get 0 there, 0 there. So 30t congruent to 0 mod 7. So we can let t equal 7u because 0 is going to be our first solution. You just have to work these out by trial and error trying each of the numbers, but they're not. these numbers won't generally be too big, so you don't have many, too many to try. So be, uh, because it's mod 7, you can only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 0. Um, let t is 7u, put that into our equation for x, which we have here, x is 30t plus 6, put that in, multiply it out, and we'll get our general solution for all of these four equations can be solved if we choose x as 210u plus 6 where u is a multiplier, and you can try that out if you like, just put in different values for u, and it'll work fine. And that's it.